Hey guys, it's Sean Astrom here, and I am super excited to show you some of the new features inside of the new Corona Renderer plugin for Cinema 4D. So let's check it out. Hey guys, it is Sean Astrom here and I wanted to do a little quick tutorial on Corona Renderer and how it all works um, in the latest beta, which you can go download in Cinema 4D, for Cinema 4D rather. Um, but if you hop over to corona.com, you can um, find their forum here, down here at the Corona Forum. And over here I have the Corona Forum pulled up. And in order to get the latest beta, um, I would just suggest setting up an account, hopping on a form, and going into this uh, Corona for Cinema 4D and Corona Daily Builds. If you click that link, then you can go up here to uh, Beta 1, and you can see all the different betas up here that they have. Now, it's still in beta. I know they're trying to push this out very soon, um, but the Cinema 4D integration is just awesome. And if you look at the gallery here, they've updated recently. It is absolutely ridiculous, the quality of this render engine. I would highly recommend it um, to anyone looking to do uh, more photo real stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, it's absolutely stunning. Um, and more importantly though, the integration into Cinema 4D is awesome. Um, so let me show you a couple things. I was going to play around with um, some of the lights um, and the different ways to uh, that you can light your scene inside of Corona right now for Cinema 4D. Now one thing people um, always ask is, is it CPU or GPU? Now Corona is a CPU based engine and that is awesome because it fully supports all of Cinema 4D's native tools such as Fresnel, all the noise shaders, um, third party plugins, um, there's a couple of shaders that I use plug-in wise that I've used many, many years inside of Corona, or I'm sorry, inside of Cinema 4D, and all of that is supported by Corona. Um, the only other engine that really supports all that stuff that I know of is V-Ray, um, but I found that uh, Corona has been a little more, um, I don't know, I'm just really uh, liking the look that I'm getting out of Corona um, as of late. Um, so anyway, I'm going to hop into cinema here, but yeah, this is the Corona website. It's just corona-renderer.com, um, and then the forum is corona-renderer.com slash forum. Um, so if you guys want to get the latest um, beta, hop onto the forum, and it's free right now. So if you sign up to become a beta tester, um, you're, you can run it for free, and once, it's become, once it actually becomes available, um, they have some awesome... Um, pricing in terms of you can do a monthly license, you can do a boxed license, um, and they even have an awesome educational license um, for about 25 euros a year. Um, so any students out there that are interested. So um, without further ado, I'm going to hop into cinema here and I'm going to just try and keep this super simple. I just want to show you guys some basic stuff. Um, but first thing I'm going to show you guys is if I go into the render settings, of course, we want to add Corona as our render engine. Um, I'm going to name this Corona here. And one of the things you may notice with Corona is there are not a whole lot of settings here. It's kind of ridiculous how simple it is. I know Arnold is extremely simple, um, but I would argue that um, Corona is even uh, slightly simpler to use because there aren't really any sampling or, um, you know, uh, Essentially, there's no sampling settings that you have to really mess with, or at least they recommend that you don't mess with them. Um, but one thing I'm going to do before I dive in here is I'm going to go over to the performance settings tab, and I'm going to just turn, um, put in a number here for the interactive rendering max passes. I'm going to set that to 20 because I'm going to show you guys the new interactive renderer that is in the latest beta, and I want to set that to 20 just so it's not rendering and rendering and rendering um, by default there. I'm also going to lower my resolution um, to something like 800 here, so it's nice and speedy for you guys. But anyway, I'm gonna pop in a ground here, or a plane rather, and I am going to bring in a sphere. Look at that. And my um, primitive uh, settings are changed by default. You can do that under edit, set as default. And so I have these changed 
to a different default. Some of you are wondering why my sphere is at 50 centimeters as to opposed to 100. Um, but anyway, if I go ahead and hit this, these are my uh, Corona little icons that I've got my UI up here. If I drop down the Corona drop down menu here, this is this is everything um, that, that you get basically. Um, but I'm gonna just click this guy. That's gonna fire up the IPR and of course, You'll see it's calculating, it's already rendered 20 passes, done like that, but we have no lights in our scene, so therefore there's really nothing to render. Um, so first thing I'm gonna do is show you guys just the basic Corona light, and that's this little guy up here. You just throw a Corona light in your scene. Um, you'll see in the IPR here, I get some nice instant feedback. Um, now, as I mentioned, Corona is a CPU-based engine, and I don't think they have any time or have any plans of making a GPU um, anytime soon, but that's kind of a good thing. Um, there's some big studios that may have invested already in you know hundreds of CPU-based servers, and you know this rendering or Corona will work on any CPU-based computer. So you know it'll work on your laptop, it'll work on anything. Um, and you know while GPU rendering is incredibly fast, Corona is probably the fastest engine I've used on. Um, you know, as a CPU-based uh, render, Arnold is a close second, um, but there are some things that Corona does, uh, especially for interior scenes and everything else that it's just kind of like black magic. I don't understand how it's so fast, not to mention the denoising um, feature that they added recently, and I'm going to show you guys here that uh, all that here in a little bit. So I'm going to add a target tag here to my light, and I'm just going to have that point at my sphere here. And one thing you'll notice is it's pretty overexposed, and I can just hop in here into this post tab. Now this is the Corona um, frame buff buffer here, and I don't know if they ha intend to integrate the IPR um, in any other way in cinema, but right now it's kind of just operating here in the Corona frame buff buffer, which is actually kind of preferred um, in my opinion, but I can just change the exposure here, um, and just like that, now I'm getting a proper exposure just by um, stopping it down a few stops here. Um, so I'm gonna show you some of this other stuff too if there's time in this video here. But anyway, so here's a little light, looks nice. I'm getting very quick feedback. One thing that's really cool is if you notice the frames per second in my uh, cinema viewport here are staying ridiculously high and um, for whatever, some, I don't know how they magically figured that out, but regardless of how complex the scene gets in here. The IPR seems to be running, maybe it's on a separate thread or something, but it doesn't really seem to affect the frames per second um, in the viewport, which is huge and awesome. Um, so anyway, moving along here, I'm gonna pop in another light. I'm gonna push that off to the side here, and we'll just color that. And I can color it by temperature, of course, because again, um, all of these things are supported inside of Corona. Um, there's no weird kind of third-party stuff you have to learn. Um, it's pretty much going to function and operate almost identically to the way um, standard renderer works and uh, physical. In fact, I would argue that it's even a little simpler. Uh, but I'm going to go to this light here and let's, I don't know, warm that guy up a little bit. So, um, you know what, I think something, oh, I'm missing some some stuff here it's outside my window here na, 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 na. okay good enough that's cool actually no i'm gonna go here and i just i'm gonna use my good old hsv sliders here to adjust the color sometimes i find that to be a little easier okay cool so I got some lights here. Now one quick thing I will show you is you can select both these guys and just uncheck direct vis visible directly and of course that will hide the lights from the, the render there which is quite nice. And I'm gonna just create a new Corona material, pop that onto the sphere and go to my reflections here and we'll just kinda add a little bit of reflection to this material. So super simple. Um, and this is one way of lighting your scene. I'm gonna show you the second way here. Well, first though, if I select this light, I do wanna go over the different light types. This is by default set to area light. Not only um, do you have area, but you have a sector sector light, uh, which is essentially like a spotlight. Um, and that gives you some nice control here. And you can adjust the angle of that, and you can adjust the radius and all that good stuff. Segments. Um, 
and then we have this very awesome directionality setting um, and that is really powerful and allows us to create nice hard shadows um, when we need them uh, but I typically don't use these spotlights too often I prefer to use the area lights um, but if we want this area light to have a harder shadow we can just increase that directionality and you can see that happening here in my viewport um, and uh, let's see what else we got here under light shape we can switch that to circle as well for uh, as the area light and then we can also adjust the radius and the segments of that geometry essentially um, other than that we have object here and this is where you can do some different uh, kind of primitives cube cylinder um, which is kind of interesting and uh, yeah so but but by default, I'm just going to stick to the uh, rectangle, and we'll set this back to 100-100. I think it, by default it's 50-50. But and I'm going to lower the directionality back to zero. Uh, I don't know. Maybe let's actually do 20. So that's looking pretty cool. Very beautiful sphere. Um, and then of course we have the intensity. So this is where we can increase the intensity, um, essentially the brightness of the light. So that's very basic. Um, default lights that come with Corona. Now what's so cool about the way the lights work in Corona is I can actually create a light material and then I can create a plane. I'm going to set the orientation to Z plus. I'm going to set my plane size down to 50. Pop that in here. I'm going to just have some shortcuts up here. I'm going to do this, um, what is it, centered parent. So we'll pop that in the same position as that other light there. I'm going to just copy this tag over to this guy. and I'm going to get rid of that light. And for this plane, I'm going to pop on this light material here. And don't see it refreshing. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's in there. It's just this light is not bright at all. Now, they claim, and, and, and everything I've tested so far, is that the way these lights um, work, as far as the light material goes, it's going to give you almost all the same settings that you get in this light but with a few extras such as being able to add textures and all that good stuff. So, but if I go in here and just increase the intensity to 150, let's say, let's warm this light up a little bit and that's looking pretty good. So now we have this light here, which is essentially just a piece of geometry, um, which is pretty cool. Now, one of the most powerful things and the reason I swear that Corona is one of the best engines for cinema is if I want this light to look more like a softbox, for example, one of the nifty little things I can do is I can go into here and add in a gradient texture, and this is all being procedurally calculated. So if I switch this to um, box, we'll get this nice procedural shader right inside of my light here. And again, this is the default Cinema 4D shader everything is working and now all of a sudden I've kind of built myself this nice little procedural softbox that I can adjust the or parametric I should say I can adjust the size of my geometry here and that texture is just going to map accordingly um, of course the turbulence feature works which is nice if I lower that to two um, now we're starting to get pretty decent looking um, fake softbox um, which is pretty dang cool that all of that works so that is one nifty thing that you can do um, using the light material. Um, you can see I get a much kind of more realistic reflection going on on my sphere here. So this sphere is pretty boring. So I'm going to actually created a project earlier. Well, it's just a model that I downloaded off of 3D scans. And that is 3dscanspelledout.com. And there's some awesome models up here that you can just download. Um, that's this rhino guy right here. I did end up using the new, oh, where is it? The uh, new polygon reduction tool or object. And this is amazing. And I was able to reduce this rhino down to about, you know, half a million polygons, whereas before it was about three million. So if you guys haven't checked out the polygon reduction tool yet, you should definitely do that. I'm just going to copy this guy into my Corona scene here, and I will get rid of that sphere. And just so we have something a little more interesting that I can show off how awesome Corona is with. 
So I have this light here, and I have this light, and I'm going to throw, well, these targets need to be pointed at the rhino. And let me just fire this up again. So I'm going to hit that guy again. I found that um, right now, at least, the best way to activate the IPR is just by going through here. You can do this stop render here, but I've had some kind of weird things happen with that, but I'm sure it's just because, uh, again, this is still uh, in beta, but I know they're working real hard to get this out soon. Um, so, but anyway, I have these lights set up. I have this model brought in and let me just scale this guy up a little more. So anyway, it's looking really nice. Um, have a default alpha channel right here I can view. Um, and let's just see what I can't do here real quick with just playing around with this material. So I have this basic material here and again, um, one of the things that's supported is like the Fresnel, for for example. So if I add that to the diffuse channel, which is kind of weird, but then I could do sort of some int interesting uh, coloring just by using the um, diffuse channel here and then popping in a Fresnel. Um, something you might do for like a car paint or something like that. Um, and then the, re the reflection here, let's say I want to add some kind of grunge to my reflection, I can just do that with Cinema's wonderful uh, built-in noises. So if I just go here and, um, I don't know, set Luca, for example, one of my favorite uh, procedural noises inside of Cinema, if I scale that up, kind of see what, what kind of effect we're getting there. Um, if I increase the contrast here, essentially I have this procedural map, um, procedural noise shader acting as sort of a grunge map. Um, for the reflection there. And if I go back here and increase my IOR, we can see that a little better. Um, but needless to say, it's it's pretty awesome that all that stuff is supported. Um, it's not having to bake out any shaders like uh, all the GPU renders do because it can do these types of out of core effects on the fly. Um, so I don't know, let me just try another shader here and let's see what we get. So pretty cool. I'm sure if you took the time to combine a bunch of these noises, um, you can get some pretty dang good looking stuff um, in terms of more realistic looking grunge maps. But that's pretty cool for now. I'm going to clear that out. And we just got our glossiness setting here. Another thing you guys might notice is the settings here, the, the features inside of the single one material that they give you is pretty much everything you need um, and it's ridiculously simple to set up. So if I want to turn this into glass, I can just simply turn on refraction and now I have glass. And if I want to enable caustics, I can do that here. They give you a little warning here that's going to really slow things down with caustics, but I think we kind of all know that. Um, but you'll see, see we're getting um, nice caustics there. If I uncheck that, speed things up. and. Not only that, but the subsurface scattering and the volumetric effects inside of Krona are also ridiculously fast and amazing. But if I go and enable volume here, and then I go into a fraction and just, I might just try setting this to one. And under volume here, if I just throw in some quick colors here, we can see what happens here once we increase the distance, then we're gonna start getting um, some volumetric effects. Now, I'm going to just throw down the glossiness here. In fact, even lower that back to a more reasonable value. So we can kind of take a look at the volumetric stuff here. But I don't know. It's, it just looks awesome to me. And it renders crazy fast. And let me go to the fraction. And let's increase that to 1.5. And you'll see we get a little bit of a fraction going on here, um, which is cool. And then if I lower the distance, we're going to get more of like a solid uh, subsurface object um, and kind of see that there. And of course, you know, if we play around with our colors here and then we also have this directionality setting here, which is pretty interesting. It kind of like I've played around with it for doing like clouds and stuff. If you want to get kind of like silver lining effect, you would crank up that um, directionality right there. But yeah, I don't know the subsurface scattering or volumetric stuff that it does inside of Corona somehow is incredibly fast and I believe it's all ray traced. No, no trickery going on. 
although in the latest version I think they do have a different uh, SSS model that is even faster that's more of a um, unbiased uh, kind of effect but if I go back to my reflections here and just crank up the IOR um, I don't know kind of a pretty cool little material I've created there with um, not a whole lot of effort and it's just fast I really just wanted to show you guys how fast this is and how easy it is to set up some lights um, now it could be faster by putting a diffuse material on there but anyway everything's working awesome in this beta it has been a couple bugs I've come across but I highly encourage you guys to check it out um, and yeah it's just really cool all of these shaders again are supported so uh, I'll show you real quick here if I throw a displacement on here I'm a big fan of biometrics um, enhanced C4D shaders um, some of you may not may or may not know about these but they're kind of like a third-party um, plug-in available for cinema um, which gives you even more procedural shaders like here's a crack I mean it's kind of like having substance designer right inside of cinema here but if I throw that guy on my Rhino and then I refresh since we got displacement um, it does require kind of a refresh you'll see that we're getting some um, awesome procedural displacement there we're getting some intersecting geometry but that's to be expected with this guy um, if I just throw in a sphere and I'm gonna increase the segments of this and make it editable I've had better luck making the sphere object editable right now with the with the current beta um, but you know this guy is I don't know it's just amazing to me that all this is working parametrically and procedurally you know third-party plugins are supported um, if I update my IPR here you'll see that we're getting that fast amazing displacement if I crank up my main light here I don't know, let's go 450 it's pretty bright but um, yeah I don't know all this stuff works it's really great now if I want to increase the quality of that displacement I can hop over in to the performance setting if I just set this screen size value down to one um, and then I do a refresh here see it's gonna recalculate also looks like it reset my exposure there no big deal but that's how quick it's calculating that displacement which is awesome um, yeah I'm just super excited for Corona I really hope that it becomes available soon. I know they're really shooting by the end of the year, possibly maybe um, early next year to have the official Cinema 4D version available. Um, yeah, I could play in here all day long, guys. I hope to do a bunch more tutorials specifically on Corona because yeah, I, I am trying to just use this for, for the majority of my work. Um, the only the render I've really been playing a lot with lately is Redshift and I think we all know how awesome Redshift is. Um, but for those of you that have a pretty fast computer and don't want to invest in four GPUs, um, Corona is pretty dang amazing. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, I plan on doing more of these. I'm hoping to do maybe two a week. Um, let me know what you guys think down in the comments and uh, yeah, let me know if there's some features that you'd like to see inside of Corona and cinema and i will definitely do my best to um, start posting uh, more videos talk to you guys later Prograph.com, an online resource for learning Cinema 4D, After Effects, and other motion graphics tools specifically catered to help you prevail as a motion graphic designer. What's up, bros? Welcome to another Brograph motion graphics tutorial. With tutorials, plugins, and now a podcast with tens of thousands of listeners worldwide. Yeah, it's a great community to be part of. We give you professional time-saving tips, industry news, interviews, shortcuts, and lessons that help keep you current in the world of motion design. 
throw in the HDR studio, take the render settings, pick the HDR, put in a reflection, and gorgeous. I love projects that scare me. When our art director comes to us and asks for something that I had never done before, man, it gets me pumped. Our weekly long-form podcast will give you the latest news, help you in your file management, hardware configuration, and client relations. Learn about the latest render engines, modeling techniques, and workflow integration while staying entertained. Real nice banana. Ah, that's so funny. All right. I'm going to live forever. <laughs> Our BroGraph talks are a chance to see the way industry leaders from around the globe are changing the face of motion design. Sometimes you got to make stuff that you're not going to put on your reel. And I'm not here to judge. The podcasts and talks include people like People, Barton Damer, Nick Campbell, Andrew Kramer, David Aryev, Chad Ashley, Paul Babb, EJ Hassenfrost, Mitch Myers, Chris Schmidt, Jules Urbach, Cornelius Dammer, David Brodeur, Andy Needham, Caitlin Kajou, Zubair Parker, Noseman, Ryan Bean, Casey Hupke, Nick Lyons, Sage, Joey Corinman, Jeremy Cox, Rick Barrett, John Dickinson, Matthias Omatola, Patrick Gosky, Brandon Clements, Steve Teeple, Tom Glimpse, Patrick Longstrom, Julia Simone, Devin Coe, Al Heck, and even Dead Mouse. You get that render done. Yeah, you better frame frame what? Our BroGraph breakdowns go behind the projects and give you an insight on what it's like to manage and maintain your own personal business or work for a large company. Join us for live sessions, check out our useful plugins, watch time-lapse projects, interact with us, and send us email questions and topic ideas. Or just hit the rando render button and do an imaginative daily that'll keep you on your toes. Take all your dreams and let's do it! Subscribe today and get automatic updates on the latest tutorials, tricks, tips, and inspiration brought to you by industry professionals Dave Koss and Matt Milstead. We don't care how you get here, folks. Just get here. Subscribe now to BroGraph Tutorials. Pretty good, I guess.